for sure. Well, I, I did do therapy one time. I'm not a therapy person, though. I prefer... Tequila soda with a splash of pineapple. Yeah. yeah. And sage, obviously. <laughs> and sage. <laughs> and being a slut. I'm Zach Peter. I'm Jeff Epstein. I'm a disaster dater. I'm a disaster. Okay, so today we have the one and only makeout king, <laughs> Tom Schwartz. Um, <laughs> retired. Retired makeout king? The, the guy formerly known as the makeout king. Yeah. Why don't you make out anymore? I feel like that was your I signature mean, brand. It's like the best thing ever, too. Also, what a great Making title. out is so fun. I don't yeah. know if I want that moniker. <laughs> um, I think I'm too old for that. But it's like sometimes I, I look back and I reflect and I'm just how do you get to the point where you're so sloppy drunk that you just make out with a stranger? I could never do that again. I, I, it's, it's just it's like I, it's out of me. whatever that was is now no longer a part of who I am. I remember one Did it a time. month ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it as much. Well, no, I literally just told a story about how I was on a date with another guy and then I made out with another guy right in front of him and my date didn't like that. Naked. I thought it would be hot though, you know? What so it was it was a spontaneous thing. It was I was on a date with one guy and then this other guy came up and started hitting on me in front of him and I was like, "Oh, maybe this will turn him on if we make out." And so I made out in front of him and he did not like that. So you're thinking it was going to turn into like that Zendaya movie, the tennis movie, Challengers? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Have you? No, but it, it sounds like a good time. It was okay. Is it slutty? Um, I don't know. I didn't love the soundtrack and like the pacing of it. Like Also, the chemistry between the, the, the three leads was off for me. Sorry, I don't want to. Dis- no, and if there's no chemistry, listen, that goes back to the as well. I wasn't Yeah. You guys, I want to say it's really nice to be here. Thank you for Thank coming you for in coming. studio with us. I'm sorry that I was a little bit of a drama queen about like coming downtown. I was like, Zach, can I just like zoom in? He's like, dude, come on. Zoom in. I know. We, I, we were like, 40 it's literally minutes away. 30. I miss this lovely, luxurious. We had them turn on the red lights just for you. And actually, we turned it on for me because I was bitching before. Yeah, he I've was, actually been really. He was the here. drama the, today. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, 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 I'm, com- I literally. I don't know if I want to say this. Just say <laughs> I just woke up in a terrible mood, and I've never done this before in my life. Um, but I saged myself. How? What does that mean? I never even thought of doing just, this. I got a gift oh, package, just, and I noticed it. And I was, it was sitting there the other day, and I was like, I just, I, I was caught in a negative thought loop. Just, uh, we don't have to go into that. I, I sometimes you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Oh, I'll wake up in a foul mood. Mm. Foul. For no, there was, vicious. there was no catalyst. There was no real. Rhyme or reason behind it, I just felt like in a horrible negative mood. I didn't want to come in here with that energy, Thank you. so I saged myself for you guys. You came and did in the quite sage work? lovely. Yeah, you yeah. came in very lovely. You I, even found your way in. You were already through security by the time we went to go get you. I'm, I feel on cloud nine. I saged myself. Then I did a little workout with Cody from Peloton, mm-hmm. quick forty five minute session, and um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling sprightly, um, and I'm happy to be here. Oh, I opened Instagram while I was in my car, and. Um, the first thing that I saw was this little post, and it said, six months from now, 2020 mm-hmm. will be five years away. Oh, my God. And it kind of blew my mind, because I still feel like... That was just last year. It was 100% last year. It was like, at best, a year and a half ago. Yeah. That's I just, crazy. I just I just went on a little mini rant there. No, it was actually just um, very uh, wise. A lot of wisdom there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sage. Uh, Saged himself and let us know that I'm it's listening. been five years. If you since... show up here in a foul mood, we just take shots. Yeah, that's normally what I we was, do. That's I, normally I how we pregame sick. the shows. Yeah, and that's when I was like, oh, I'm just Oh, yeah, hot he toddies. came in with a hot toddy. Yeah, I came in with a canned wine. You had a hot toddy, and well, we I was were like, just... Why am I going to suffer? Here's my biggest thing about being sick. I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to enjoy myself. So it's, again, it's a family thing. We'll just have hot toddies all day. No, that that's my yeah. mom's remedy. She's like, oh, you're sick. Let me just, I mean, they're essentially hot toddies, but she calls them remedies, but it's really just warm whiskey. Yeah. When I'm sick, it's time to treat yourself. I lean Thank into you. it. I milk it. I'll Maybe I'll have a hot toddy. I'm definitely getting takeout. I'm watching movies, comfort movies. Yeah. I go to Creation for like wellness stuff. I'm getting like $20 no. smoothies. I'm watching Clueless. I'm, I'm watching Encino Man. I am just leaning into it, turning the phone off. Clueless. See, I still like work out and stuff. Ooh. Because then you sweat it all out. Yeah, sweat out those demons. Yeah. Do you feel like you've sweat out all your, your demons? Today or in in, in general. general. Now that you're, how many years post divorce? Um, I think Katie, I think we separated in early 2022. Oh wow, that's Wait, recent. Okay, and so we just yeah. so, it's, so two and a half years ago. Yeah, even and even though I mean we've talked about this, but it's like uh, it, uh, even though it was an amicable divorce, of course it still really weighs on you. 
Yeah. And it's really sad, but um, we're in a really good place right now. Shout out to Katie. Shout out to something about her killing it. Shout out to everyone dealing with the divorce. Yeah. 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 Honestly, I always think about this. I would be wrecked. If you were getting divorced? If I, yeah, I would be wrecked. Well, the word, like, it was was pretty amicable, but one of the worst parts, and this is. Was it though? It it was pretty amicable. I feel like she asked for the divorce, though. She did, but but the way she did it was very direct and responsible and respectful. And loving. And loving, too. Yeah. And we ended up, we still lived together after we divorced for like three months. We would still like watch movies, get Postmates. We were cool. We knew it was the right decision, but it still was like a dagger in my heart. Yeah. She's like, hey, I want nothing to do with you. I think we should get a divorce. You're like, (laughs) okay. Amicable, (laughs) respectful. No, she was, uh, honestly, she handled it really well. I think we both did. You know, there were some hiccups along the way afterwards but we don't have to rehash but um i think maybe the worst part was like having your dream home and then having to go back to renting again Mm. i know yeah are you gonna rent with tom are you guys doing that (sighs) i mean it's still on the table if i if you made me decide right now i would probably lean towards no but um you guys have a whiskey together you have a bar together the answer is no yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need a roommate anymore. You're yeah. grown. Now. I think I need my own space. Yeah, you need your own space. Um, yeah. I've been looking though. Like renting's bleak. Yeah, it's like the rock bottom for a t- like okay two bedroom is like four k. Let me just say living is yeah. bleak. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, no, we're on a high here. We're on a high here. <laughs> Listen. We're on a high here. Listen, no, well, this is a beautiful moment. You guys are coming up on your ten year anniversary. Well, your I'm birdays. Not. That's, I'm, not, I'm not. It's part my of it. ten year anniversary. Ten year anniversary for the show. He's still Your does. birthdays are coming up. Oh yeah. How you feel? What's going on? Good. I'm. I'm 31. What are you? 33. 33. Yeah. And Tom? I am 36 plus five. What? Yeah. 41. 42. 36. Well, no, 30 plus five. 41. Oh, 41. 36, so I'm bad at math. 36 plus 10 minus. So five. you'll be 42 on October 16th because I just asked his birthday. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, That's why we're chaos together because we're Gemini. I gotta stay out of the sun. Fuck. You do have to stay out I of know, the sun. I keep me. telling him that. My he, twin brother's here. He gives like, me shit for getting fake tans, but I'm like, I would rather get a fake tan to look good on camera rather than a real tan and then end up like you. My twin brother's in town. He, he saw me yesterday. He's like, Your crow's feet are disgusting. I was like, Okay, yeah. doing what I can. Now it's... You know, you could use a little Botox, though. I feel like it's been a minute. Right? Yeah. You know what? I don't like guys with Botox. He's I like, want yeah. natural. I want to see wrinkles, movement, There's expression. a way to do Botox sparingly to where you don't look fake, but then you're still not getting those deep look wrinkles. Like a lady. Uh, so you'd rather just look like a raisin instead? Yep. yep. Well, then don't complain. Listen, Go bake out working, in the sun. So I'm still pulling people in left and right. For now. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see if you're as good looking at 42. Wow. Thank you, guys. I just, I cut, yeah. How do you feel about the haircut? I like the haircut. You do? I'm yeah. indifferent. A short. Indifferent. I'm struggling with it actually. <laughs> Why? He told me the same thing. It's a little too last. severe. Yeah, it's drastic. It's severe. Yeah, I think more of an uh, a gradual. It's a summer cut to go with the summer bod. Do you have a summer bod? Eh. For the Working ladies, it. your arms wait, looked good. Thank you. you have a summer bod. Look at that. Wait, are you dating somebody? Or are you? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh, so you don't need a summer bod because once you're committed in a relationship, you can like, I mean, not really, but you always have the best body when you're single. I do it more for my mental health. Me too. It has yeah. a profound impact on my ambition, my motivation, my day to day. Have you cut back on drinking? Yes. Okay, um, same. Really? Yeah. I, and you know me, I'm at CrossFit every morning. No, genuinely. He still drinks like every day. My favorite, like my go-to default cocktail is um, Patron soda with a splash of either grapefruit or pineapple. Since I want to be skinny and fit, I just suck it up. I'll literally just do Jose Cuervo, silver, and water. Jose Cuervo is borderline masochistic. I'll literally just, oh, I can literally you, just no chaser and then just be like good to go. Do you do it for nostalgic reasons or do you actually like Jose Cuervo? No, my palate is ground level, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, that's kind of like your motto in life, though. Bottom of the barrel. Yeah, it's a very trashy palate. There's only one way up, though, when you're at rock bottom. That is true. No, but I like it here. <laughs> you have so, a residency? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And same again. I like trashy boys. Like, just trash. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, this person. I'm like, no, trash. I have an aspirational palette. I'm used to trash, and it's a comfort zone, but I do like to aim a little higher. I don't like I know. It. You don't like it. You like staying at the Motel 8. I'm solid. No, hotels I actually do like nice. Yeah. I yeah. meant that as a general reference. Yeah. Not no, mentally Motel specific. 8 for sure. Yeah, yeah, energetically Motel 8. 
I, I, I feel like you, you're highbrow, lowbrow like me. Like yeah. I, I can yeah. appreciate going yes. to Applebee's. I love it. Like we were talking about earlier, ironically or unironically, no. I just dig it. I love fast food chains. But like also, it's nice to stay at the Four Seasons once in a while too. Agree. Best like, beds ever. Eat Balance. Wendy's at the Four Seasons. Whoa. That's highbrow, lowbrow. The dream, yes. We do a little bit of that at Schwartz and Sandy's, the lobster corn dog. It's a corn dog. Okay, it's the lobster corn dog. Did you have the lobster corn dogs I at Schwartz and Sandy's? Did not. I tell people this all the time because I will tell you, when they read it on the menu, they're like, that sounds sus. And I'm like, no, it's really good. Like, that's the equivalent of the goat cheese balls at Sir, like the iconic thing on the menu that you have to go and try. That Schwartz and Sandy's, you need to get the lobster corn dogs. That was a great plug. And I had this exact same exchange with someone on Tuesday when Kristen was hosting our little uh, sh- uh, retrospective VPR and someone was like lobster corn dots sounds she literally yeah. said sus mm-hmm. and then I ordered them for her and she's like oh my god these are so good I have to say everything on the menu is good. the fries are good the Caesar salad is good the steak frites are good by the way Thank you for hosting when I wasn't there because you killed it. And also thank you for your positivity. I, there's like starting June 2024 or actually January 2024. We've had nothing but people like it's been so positive. The energy in there. People Love are coming that. in. They're like, you know what? I am sorry. I judged you without coming in here because mm. this place is actually cool. I get that every night. They're like, this place is really fucking cool. No, we you know, yeah, that it was my lot first time that I'd ever been there. I was only there for a band. I also did come late. However, I will say the decor was lovely. Great. Thank you. The lovely. vibe is and fun. I'm, I would, right now, I'd be like, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I have no problem. He really that. wouldn't yeah. have any problems. I, I was like, wow. Thank no, you. it was yeah. a good time. Yeah. It, w- it was a, it was fun. I mean, well, you text me like less than a week, and you're like, "Can you come and do this?" And I was like, "Sure." And I was like juggling. I was like, oh, "My grandma's in the hospital, oh, and my brother is like having to come and spend yeah. the weekend." And it was a chaotic weekend, but we had a lot of fun. And I appreciate you. And yeah, it's been it's been a lot more positive this year. It's weird having because I do believe in the the product we created. I think it's a great fucking spot. Yeah, it's so fun. But unfortunately, the name just got so tainted. Yeah, we don't have to digress into that. No, but we are gonna. Do you have a heart tattoo on your forearm? Oh, so yeah, my my friends are tattoo artists. So I got this is Minnesota. I got Florida. Oh, I got I love New York, my favorite city in the world. I've been wanting to get a California one right here. Do you want to go together and get? I want to get more. Oh my god, let's do. I don't know. I don't have a tattoo. I also like, you have several tattoos. I have two now. I got one removed. Um, I'm like pretty blind. So at first I was like, does he have? I didn't know if they were like pim- yeah. pimples or something. Oh, that- <laughs> And I just like red spots, and I'm thinking like, or I'm like, do we have a rat? No, and then I I think they're red tattoos. That's my lucky roulette number. Yeah, I mean, I have some other shit. What is the heart inspired by? Are you having an affair with Morgan Wade? (laughs) That's how I love New York. Oh, it's my favorite city in the world. Really? New York? I love New York. Really? I enjoy New York. I wouldn't say I love New York. Oh, Guys, I love so I'm much. so miserable in that city. <laughs> really? Oh, but, but you're I'm from the East Coast. I mean, I'm from New Jersey. Oh, I'm a monster in New York. A monster. What happened between you and New York? Well, there was actually some stuff that happened. But um, even so, even before then, I think, I don't know what it is, but like I'm affected by the energy there, and I get very frustrated and irritable, and I'm like, uh, 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 like just get me out of here. Oh, man. Yeah, There's was... a lot. Well, the energy in New York is very high strung. Oh, I love it. I yeah. feel like I fit it's right fun, in. Wait, like, where are you from? I feel like I'm in a movie it's when I'm Minnesota. in Minnesota. That's right. You're from Minnesota? Yeah, I'm from Minnesota. That's Maybe that's his... why I feel like you'd like New York. Yeah, this makes sense. I was born in the mini Apple, Minneapolis. I see what um, you did there. That's what they named it that. Um, but anyways, can we back it up for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Why why did what tattoo did you get removed and why? Have you I'm sure you've talked about this. Well, you know, as you would assume when I was about 18 and I was doing heroin, um I think I just got a tattoo on my neck of like a Korean symbol. And, you know, at this point in my life, I felt we don't, this is, has to go. Mm. Yeah. What did the Korean symbol mean? Duke. And even then, so I don't. Um, Duke? It had to go. It had to go. Why Duke? I meant Duke. It's a long story. I, I I remember I was in the room when Tom was getting his A removed from his ass. For, you know, we mm. got we got ass tattoos in Vegas a while back. Um, in simpler times in Vanderland, um, but I was in the room with him when he got his his A removed. At least the first the first run, it looked like the most excruciatingly painful thing I've it ever was witnessed. Honestly, not. I would always go in. I was like, "Don't even numb me," and I was like, "Just fucking do it. I don't care." Because if you numb me, you have to wait for thirty minutes. I was like, "Go for it." Yeah. What are you? I don't know. My computer's what? not the liking Windows your story. XP is going I don't on know here. What's happening? It keeps shutting down. I feel like I need the soul full version of that i need to reset my soul look at the shuts wait down. do you still have your tattoo uh yes and it's an a i have bubba um oh. Kate, so I, my ex-wife's name is katie i right. called her bubba 
and I got a... And it says Bubba. Yeah. And then and I have Lisa Vanderpump's initials tattooed on my ass because I lost the game of high stakes ping pong to her. And so what do girls now think of Bubba? I um, I think they're cool with it. It's like it's I would I don't want to remove it because it was a very special time yeah, in my life. Rude. I have nothing but fond memories. Of course, there were some dark times, but like I have really fond memories of that chapter in my life, and I'll always love Katie. Yeah, yeah. You guys had a cute moment at the reunion. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, it was like that connection of like there's like still a mutual respect for each other, even though you know it didn't work out. But I feel like you guys are still always going to be in each other's lives. That's really sweet of you to say. I appreciate that. Yeah. Listen, we had discussed this just before. Like, I love an ex. I have a great relationship with exes. I also said this too. I hate when people bash them because I'm like, that's on you. All yeah. of my exes truly are some of my favorite people in the world. That's why I was like, people are like, ugh, this fucking loser I dated. I'm like, so that's on well, you. I also think like people leave relationships and they automatically just blame the other person without taking any sort of like personal responsibility or accountability for like their own red flags or their own issues. And they're just like, this person's a narcissist or this person is this or this person's that. And that's not to say that the other person probably wasn't terrible, but like there were also things that I'm sure you were contributing or there were re red flags that you were ignoring that kept you in this situation. Yeah, Reflex. it's almost always more nuanced than people will let on. But Do I've also learned in the moment just to like let them vent, validate those feelings. Yeah. Don't be like I used to always be like, Well, what did you do? I was too quick to drop mm. to drop on uh, what did you do? So what good. did you do? What would you regret from your marriage? Um, Great question. I think I I think probably just that. Although in the beginning <sighs> Well, I think um, just just validating feelings more often and being a better listener, mm -hmm. letting 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 her vent more often without me judging or me trying to provide a solution too fast. You know what I mean? Uh, trying to provide a solution too fast. Like, I don't know what you mean. Like well, trying no, to be too like, logical. Well, why don't yeah. you? What like instead or of not just... a, But I think from what I've seen, like I think it was more of like she would have an issue that she would come to him, and it sounded like maybe she just needed somebody to listen, and he was more of the problem solver. So mm. he was trying to solve the problem for her without just letting her have her emotions and expressing them. Which... And I know I'm this. I'm very much like you. I'm, if somebody comes to me with a problem or something, I'm like, solution, let's fix this. What is, how can we, you know, resolve the situation? And sometimes people just want to be heard rather than have the problem fixed. Totally. So, like I have a problem, I'm like, I'm in the same boat. No, <laughs> you, you no, like, no, I'm, are I'm, like, I'm pretty... you one up and you're like, oh, that's your problem. Well, let me tell Wait, you let me how tell my you. problem <laughs> is way more, how my life is in way more shambles than yours. Well... No, but that's a Mr. Good. Rock also, Bottom over there. Yeah. yeah. Listen, that comes from a place of empathy and kindness. You want to be like, hey, how can I help you? How can I fix this? No, I'm actually like that too. Even the one that I was in cahoots with in the, like, you know, two months ago, and he was like, oh. And I was like, okay, like, how can I help you do this? Like, how can I, let me get this for you, whatever. Like, I want to, you know. That fucked up my last situation with, what did we name him? George. No, not George's current. Fuck. Um, We're using code names. Yeah, well, I'm using code names. He's blasting people. Actually, when I talk yeah, I about keep my forgetting and I just say the name, so whatever. How is it? Can we get into that a little bit? How how are you guys holding up right now? In terms of dating, it's I feel like it's bleak out there in 2024. It's bleak. You have like 10 dudes that you're talking to <laughs> right now. I don't know how that's bleak for you. You looked real. You, you had the smarmiest. You had the smarmiest look what on I your said, face. So again, so I go. I go to Brick, which is a crossroad gym in West Hollywood. And I would say I just I circle the realm there, where this one's here. I'm the, it's really just it's a it's very incestual. Yeah, yeah. I'm like one at a time. So there's one guy that I've been talking to for like the last two months. But like I don't know if it's going. I don't know if I want to take it. I don't. I've never been in a relationship, which I know Isn't is already that fucking a red flag. crazy. It's the, that's actually the big oh and we will get to a red flag game but that's the biggest red flag I've ever heard uh, is it I said that to him on a date recently we were at Laurel Laurel Hardware I love that place yeah it was, fun, it. It remember, was fun time actually do you remember if you lived here when it was an actual hardware yeah. store yeah I remember yeah. But, uh, but so anyway, and I told him, I was like, I know this is a red flag, but I've never been in a relationship. But it's because I don't want to jump into a relationship for the sake of just being in a relationship. I want to make sure that, like, there's compatibility and this could actually be something. Uh, maybe I've overthought it and I'm okay. preventing myself so from. So you're 31. And again, it could be different for different people. I'm just thinking of, like, an average. I'm 33. I've maybe been in, like, five relationships-ish. How many have you been in? I think I've been in, I think, four long-term ones. I've been in love, like, three times. Um, but I, I'm a serial monogamist. I'm not a good yeah. dater. And I just, I've, I've been so fortunate to just fall into really awesome relationships my whole life. 
I'm, that's well, probably really annoying. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to rub it in. But like, I'm uh, fine. Like, I'm actually very. Loser. No, no, well, because every guest comes in here and they're and every time we talk dating, they they're always jaded. like, they think I'm jaded. I don't think that I'm jaded. I just. You don't seem jaded. I'm not jaded. I, I love I think love. You're particular. I'm you're very guarded. particular. I'm a, I'm a, a little guarded. Do you feel Do you feel a, a sense of urgency? Do you think you're developing a complex? Like, uh, f- best reference I can think of is like the forty year old virgin. Oh, it's become like Thank his you. obsession, losing his virginity. Are you Are you Are you starting to feel some sort of uh, a, 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 a biological clock? No, because I'm even at the point where I would ha- like if I were ready to have a family, I would have a kid on my own, even if I don't have a partner in my life. Um, Respect. And if anything, I'd prefer. That because I don't want to have to deal with the baby daddy, but I'm not a guy. I think I I also Mm -hmm. think though that maybe the longer I refrain from getting into a relationship, the more the criteria gets stricter because then I'm like, then the first relationship has to be a good relationship, and so I maybe I'm putting the walls a little too high. Okay, (laughs) that's interesting. So, like. I You're don't think it's that big of a red flag, it though. It is very... It is, Why? It's more so bizarre. It, and he thinks it, too, because I can see it in his face. <laughs> Wait, so, so oh, wow. I've never, I've never... I don't know if I've ever met well, someone listen, who's never With all due, though, and I will give this, it's different when you're gay because you come out later, so it's like, you know, you yeah. may have had your first like, kind of serious girlfriend in high school, so it's like it definitely does start later. However, I mean, again, I had my first, like, boyfriend at 20 I've, yeah been in love twice maybe had like three boyfriends and they had like five kind of relationship but yeah like i yeah. will say i do feel like i have been in love before i've just never actually hmm. like i would say i was in love with hmm. what's his name hmm. would you agree with that assessment i i don't know i don't know anybody's listen i remember thinking i was in love with the first person i dated for years and then realizing a couple years ago oh no that actually wasn't i was only in love with two people Oh, yeah. I was. I, I've met people who have never fallen in love, and I'm. I. Very I, I I'm that's very sad. careful not to be like, oh my god, that's so sad because I don't want to rub sad. it in. It but it makes me. Sad, it's one of the great simple pleasures in life. Maybe the yeah. meaning of life, love. I um, actually, it is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. yeah. The high, the high highs, the low lows can be disastrous. Oh, but. The worst feeling in the world. True. <laughs> actually, you're right. No Disaster heartbreak is, doesn't get worse than heartbreak. Doesn't get better than love. So we risk it. It is worth yeah. the risk. The juice is worth, worth the, the squeeze. Risk. Yeah, the, juice is worth the, the highs are worth the lows. I like the love. I just don't love the commitment part. That's okay. I respect that. Yeah, I, you're very. It. I love your self awareness yeah. and your introspection and your. I'm here for it, and I love the love. And the sex is so much better when there's love. That's why I hook yeah. up on my exes. I always just hook up with. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a loaded comment. He oh, always no, hooks up with multiple exes all the time. Yeah, I mean, like a month ago, I did two ex sleepovers back to back. Like. Two, Wednesday night one, Thursday night the next one. I do like collecting guys. Like, like I keep them on the shelf. Like, there are guys that have been in my life for, like, eight, nine years that I still keep in the rotation every once in a while. I'd prefer those over meeting new guys, totally. even though, like, they don't have potential and maybe a couple of them have wives. But, like, kidding, kidding. I Zach, you have, you have a harem. You have a harem <laughs> of men at your disposal. It's a it's roster. Just like a, yeah. <laughs> it's a roster. It's just, I have no. a roster as well. It's a shelf and of there's trophies. Different tiers. There's ones that are strictly hookups. There's ones that are like hookups with maybe some snuggling, and then ones when I'm like not as in good of shape. So like I lower my standards. Like there's just different tiers. Yeah, but but it's we have arena. talked about like as you change. Like I feel like I've changed a lot in the past year, and then your caliber of like who you date changes. So some of those trophies you take off the shelf and you throw them back in the garbage. Yeah, and based on your guys' tonality and just the way you're, you're expressing yourself right now, it seems like you have very healthy relationships with these people who you're not in a relationship yeah, with. Thank Does that you. make sense? I feel like based yeah. based on what you just told me that if they if you really needed them in a pinch, they they would be there for you. Yeah, even though you're not technically dating them. Oh yeah, no, for sure. You should be a therapist. Well. And it, like, I just need hit one. Me. I need one. Totally. And most of most therapists need one more than anyone else. Yeah. But you would actually be a great therapist. Better help. It just hit me. You yeah. better help one of your sponsors. Better, no, better <laughs> help. You, are you on betterhelp.com? <laughs> I signed up and I never actually used um I've never well, I, I did do therapy one time. I'm not a therapy person though. I prefer tequila soda with a splash of pineapple. Yeah. And sage, obviously. <laughs> and sage. <laughs> and being a slut. Do you feel like the sage worked? <laughs> slut. Did the sage work? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I can't 
but say it didn't seems, work. I, 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 I thought he was a therapist, so clearly it worked. Yeah. Okay, so take us back to post-divorce. You're okay. starting to get back onto the dating market. Yeah. What was, did you have a hoe phase? Lala's all about the hoe phase. Did you have a hoe phase? Were you actively dating? Did you go on Tinder? Like, how was your entry back into the market? Someone sort of just appeared in my life whose name we won't. Oh, reference. yeah, we don't need to. But, uh, but uh, I did go through a phase where I downloaded Hinge. Ugh, oh, I not. hated it. Oh, it's not awful. great. It's nothing against Hinge, just dating websites in general. Yeah. I'm old school. I bump into people. Yes. I like bump. I like meeting someone in a bar on a whim. It takes the excitement out of it. No All the sin- excitement is in the kind of like in-person flirtation and guessing like, are we flirting? Whereas Hinge, you're like, no, we're on here to flirt, so it's forced. But you're like, No, this, some people guessing. on dating apps are like, oh, I'm just looking to make friends. I'm like, then go on a fucking friend app. Don't go on a dating app. <laughs> Stop being such a loser. You'll get friends real quick. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait, that was really funny. <laughs> um, no, I just, I felt, it felt like a, a, a part-time job and I, I didn't yeah. take any pleasure in it. And also when I was, when I would like swipe to reject someone, I felt bad. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't even met you and I'm just like, it feels so dismissive. Or like when they a whole try person, to match you like, and they I don't like you. your filtered photo next. Or like they'll try to match you so they like comment on one of your pictures and leave like a super sweet comment. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I got it. But like, and they're like, it's the sweetest thing they've ever said. But you've had and some. Su- a lot of thought. You guys have had, um, you've had some success on dating apps. You obviously not because you've never had a boyfriend. Well, so <laughs> that doesn't mean okay. The guy that I'm talking to now, we met on Tinder. Yeah, I just I needed to get back on the. I went out. I got out of like a really complicated situation, and so I was like, I need to just enthrall myself into all of the options, really, just to kind of put myself out there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he came from Tinder. What's I his mean, name? Uh, yeah. Or you can give me a code name. We we call him George, right? That's George. Name. Yeah. For some reason, a, a jingle that Mike Shea, remember Sheena's ex-husband, he, wrote it just oh, popped in my head. He, and it was like, his name is George. We met on Tinder. Wait, I don't remember the rest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that You did it to like a tone of Kesha's Timber. Yeah. So is that what that it was? That is Timber. I'm going Timber. Okay. Okay. So We're George. going down. I, I thought I'm th- yelling Timber. I every other boy was in person I met one on Hinge and it's only because we had matched and he was just like I hate like the back and forth chit chat too and he literally was just like do you want to just meet and go on a date somewhere so it's basically like a blind date we walk in we sit down and I this is like one of my go to's and I said tell me something random and he was like I have a twin brother named Justin and I was like I have a twin brother named Justin and we were both like oh my god and then it just hit it off but like I was like let's just go in person right away and then since then, I remember I tried to go back on Hinge. I was like, "Fuck this!" And now I just meet people across it. I was I'm so, I was caught off guard when you said I don't like the back the the, the back and forth because you seem like your banter is insane. You have great like repartee energy. Yeah. I do, but it's more so like before. Thank you. It is. Um, no, <laughs> but it's also, more so not that, like, everybody it can be a waste else has of time. That. You're yeah. doing back and forth, and you never meet up, and whatever. Yeah. And then yeah, not a lot of people have that. Which that's also too. It's always a, lot a of test. Are losers. When I say tell me something <laughs> random, huge losers. I'm like tell me something random. I want to see if we can like pinball each other. I also yeah. want to see what you say. Some people are like, um, like my favorite color is red or whatever. I'm like grow up. Like, I need something, like, with substance Of substance, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because if you meet somebody when you're out or at CrossFit or in person, you can vibe off of their energy and their personality. When you're on a dating app, you can't really do that. And then a lot of people either don't know how to communicate or can only communicate behind a screen but don't know how to communicate in person. It's just a waste of time. Or it's, like, be cheeky, witty, and and flirty. Like, somebody, I was like, yeah, tell me something random. I forget what they said. And then they're like, now you tell me something. And I was like, I think you're super cute. Like, you you can do it like that, too. Um, Yeah. Did you know that they're working on AI dating? Oh, fuck me. So that you sign up for an app and you have an AI that dates other people's AI to see if there's a match and a compatibility before you decide that there's a match and a compatibility to meet in person. Catfishing? That's kind of interesting. Catfishing? It's a little... It's, it's a... not catfishing. It's like you in AI version and then them in AI version and then the algorithm does its thing to see if there's compatibility before you like go and meet in person. I haven't. Wait, have, has anybody pretended to be you catfish-wise? Like... Pretend sure to be me? Have. Oh, I don't no. know. Oh, yeah, I'm you. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they the, have. Not that I know of, but I remember um someone I met, uh, I wasn't super close with, close with, was using a picture of us together in in their Hinge oh. profile. So is that is that semi? Wait, a person okay. you never met. So no, no, a person photo. I was like friends with. I can't remember. Oh, like oh, an acquaintance, uh, and I was like, and they told me I was like, oh, that's. I didn't care. I laughed. I thought I was cute, but I was flattering. Is that is that semi catfishing? Uh, I wasn't actually really. one of a deal breaker for me. 
No group Celebrity photos photo. oh, files. Well, every time it's a group photo, it's always the one you don't want in the group. Oh. Like they put a group photo with all their attractive friends and then you swipe to the next picture and it's not who you want it to be. I have no shame. Never who you want it to gone be. To match. So I was like, oh, fuck, I've seen their whatever. And they had a group photo. So I go to match. And I was just like, honestly, who is your friend? <laughs> He liked the and friend I felt in bad, the group but I, photos, oh. so he matched with them for the and friend. I, so here's the thing: I love a ginger, and oh. I remember it was a super hot ginger. And I was like, oh. I was like, this is bad. This is. That. I was like, but I gotta go for. It. I can't miss it. And so I was like, who's Shoot your ginger shot. friend? Question mark. And he was like, are we matching? I was like, no. Just want you. Did, did you get? <laughs> no. Oh. No. He... Would you be like? Would you match with somebody? And you'd be like, no. oh yeah. He yeah, quickly here's my unmatched friend. me, so I no. could not. Contact I would. Him. I would facilitate that because I was like, we're not, we're not meant well, to you're be. A nice guy. Why impose on a potential? I'm yeah. I'm very much like let's. We're clearly both here for the same reason. So if it's not us, let's let's figure this out for all of for everyone. Do you guys? Do you guys? Uh, I'm sure you've covered this. But do you guys have any horror stories from dating apps? Not apps, but horror stories otherwise dating. Of dating, like that, yeah. yeah. Um. Well, no. Oh, yeah. Well, I've told this one before. the The little person story. Yeah, I got yeah. catfished by a little person. What? Can you walk me through that? Yeah. So we met on an app. Yeah. And then I was out of town. So he was coming over to hook up at my hotel room. He showed up in my hotel room. I opened the door and he was a little person. And online he, he was just a regular like yeah. regular Joe Schmo. Yeah. And And did... then he ended up being a little person. And then I was like, Well shit, how do I reject him now? So I still fucked him. Well, actually, this is what I need to clarify about the story. And I'm glad that I have it. Thank you, Schwartz, for giving me the platform to clarify this because it went viral when I did Jeff Lewis Live yeah, I and I told the story and they clipped it out and it was all over fucking Instagram that I fucked a little person, which I have nothing I have no problem admitting that because Honestly, discrimination yeah. is not in my it's, heart. No, it's great. Why but it's just well, however, he may... I want to clarify, I never actually, we never actually fucked. We started and we were fooling around and his dick came out. And then I think he could just tell that I wasn't really into it. So then he got upset and then he left. And I was like, why are you mad at me? You're literally the one that catfished me. So setting the record straight for, where's my camera? Setting the record straight for everybody. I never actually fucked him. We just started to fool around because I am a humanitarian Philanthrop philanthropist and it didn't work out. So he he rejected me. But it had nothing to do with him being a little person. Just for no, clarity. Yeah, it was no, it had I, nothing. I, 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 I he was sincerely just, believe that. I just oh, yeah. like he, he lied to me. Know. Yeah, he had an yeah. Android. No. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever hooked up with a little person? Um, no. I haven't. Would you? But you're uh, pretty tall. I guess I know, uh, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. You're no, pretty tall that I feel like yeah. you've dated some shorter girls. But like going back to what we're talking about, I like I, I I'm so I'm so fond of like the times I've met people I ended up dating and you feel like every, like time slows down for a yes. second and you just have there's like a chemical yeah. reaction and you feel like you're in a rom-com and it's like it's a seismic moment. Yeah. When you just even when you said oh like I'm home watching Clueless whatever and I was like I feel like you like the rom-com aspect to that too. I was and I was like I bet you he loves a rom-com. I do. Did you ever see recently with Anne Hathaway the idea of you? It's about that she dates a younger man. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Is it good? Guys watch the fucking movie what is it the idea of you and she yeah. again it's like she falls in love with this younger guy and she's so resistant to it and then i'm like oh, but the love is just it's undeniable and i'm like i love love i was whew. i love love too i love 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 is in the air in here right now i do love between love. who i just am not very <laughs> just, around. just yeah individually just meandering all the with red travis actually <laughs> engineer actually who, we do love texted travis me three times no, i do love him we do have some disaster dating stories that people sent in Schwartz. I love that. Okay. Are you ready for the first one? I think this yeah. is this let's see who identifies the most with this. This is fun. Yeah, it is actually. Well, let's start with this first one from Paula. Paula says, Zach, I'm such a big fan of yours and was excited to send you one of my bad dates. Thank you, Paula. Um, here it goes. I was trying to get over a bad breakup, so I decided to go on Plenty of Fish. Granted, this was over 10 years ago, so this is when it was a website, not Wait, what's an Plenty app. of Fish? It's like a match.com. It's like a Oh, oh like one hinge. of the OGs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I didn't have any experience with online dating, so I had no clue how to spot red flags, which we'll get into in a minute. I started talking to this guy, and we decided to meet up. He wanted to go to IHOP for dinner. <gasps> Fuck yes. She said, not to be mean, but that should have been the first red flag. Green flag. Green flag. <laughs> Biggest. So I meet him there, and he's late. And I didn't think that that was a, hu a huge deal. When he does show up, not only does he bear a small resemblance to his picture, and not in a good way, he must have had like 10 filters on, but he was a bit tipsy. When it was time to Expected. order, he wasn't hungry. Which to me sounds like he was broke. If he, I respect it. Or 
Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was my first thought. I never even his finances didn't flash. If it was the IHOP LA, then it was probably hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, the one on Sunset. Woof. <laughs> Guys, she said he wasn't hungry, so he ordered breakfast and he got a coffee. Not only did he eat most of my breakfast, he burped multiple times and I had to pay for the bill. I stayed long enough to make sure that he was safe to drive. I thought this date couldn't get any worse. He proved me wrong when we got outside and he farted very loudly and wetly. Then oh, wow. he shook his leg to let the fart out of his pants. After all of this, he actually wanted a kiss. While dry heaving, I told him that he was crazy and walked away from my car, or walked away from his car very fast. Find this legend. Get him in here. It seems like your type. Totally. Yeah. You would the, be okay with that. The, farting, I, the scatological stuff is really where I cross the line. But showing up tipsy, I'm okay with. I hop dream. That's actually, I always say this. It's always a test. I went to this guy, he was like a successful music exec, exec, and he was like, I want to take you to Craig's. And I was like, we are going to IHOP. And he was like, no. And I'm like, this is a fucking test to see if you're down. We're not going to fucking Craig's. We are going to IHOP. So I this don't care. Yeah. So this, guy, free- this guy's going in the roster or? No. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Where, where, where's your ideal first yeah, date ideal place? Ideal first date. Wow. IHOP? Um, Schwartz, Schwartz and Sandys. Schwartz and Sandys, I was going to say. <laughs> no, God. I, I, as much as I love that place. I guess my f- ideal first date would be. Can we? Is, oh God! Is Say this, it. What if? What if we went to the Grove and had like the Italian spot by the fountain? The fucking Grove. <laughs> what the Italian? Sp- oh the oh that's no fun? the farmers market the back the cool little red light bar at the back oh, of the farmers market. Oh, that's the farmers market. I'll give you that. Dupars, where they have like and they have like a brewery thing where you yeah. can just, like try beers on tap. Oh, it's very, the, like, yeah, yeah, that little market. It just feels like yeah. it feels like a it feels like a rom com at the Grove. I like going for, honestly a for or for a drive. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, let's go for a drive at night, like along the PCH cruise. Listen to music. We see how we connect there, and then I'm like, let's stop off at like a diner and IHOP. That's cool. That's really what it is. That's kind of iconic. Yeah, I know. I'm like um, a good dater and flirter, but you're just not a good relationship. Or no, I am. They, that... just, they all break up with me. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, I've never broken up with anyone. They've all broken up with me. Yeah. Usually after they meet your family. Every time. Yeah. I only brought two people home to meet my family and they both broke up with me after because they're fucking wild animals. You know, nobody's ever broken up with me. They're, they're like, I didn't know your family was a crack house. <laughs> Can't get dumped if you've never been in a relationship. Exactly. Wait, also, because I was like, dumped. oh yeah, your first date. And then I don't know why it hit me. Who'd you lose your virginity to? Um, my, I, I don't know if I should, is it, should I say her name. I think it's okay. she probably flattered. Her name is Mary. She's awesome. She's a badass lawyer now. She's wow. crushing yeah. life. Um, Where did you, high school? One of the coolest people I've ever high met. High school sweetheart. Yeah, school, How old? Yeah. Uh, I think I was seventeen. Oh, Maybe on sixteen. The older end. I'm sixteen. Kidding. Kidding. On the older. No, yeah. No, think, he yeah. talked about how he lost his virginity to a lesbian named Celia. Celia. I lost my virginity to like a fifty-year-old man on a train. Wait. Was it not healthy? Like it wasn't. Like it was fine. I was. You know. Amtrak I was subway. For it. Like. Amtrak. Okay. How, how old were you? Not an appropriate age. Was there alcohol involved, or was it was it consensual? Was it, it was weird? consensual? Oh, okay. It wasn't like no, nothing. It wasn't. Wait, you were know. you under eighteen? Is that why? Like, like was it? Yeah, I probably okay. shouldn't have been hooking up Olivia with him for Benson. sure. Yeah, yeah, it was not an appropriate situation, but it was. So that was, a, was bit, my... a bit SVU, but not completely. Yeah. Cool. Is he still on the roster? No, no. I haven't seen he, him I'm since sure that he's train dead ride. Now. I had yeah, probably. If he was fifty then. I'm sure he's passed away. I'm not that old. Well, that was only like 15 years ago. Well, he's like 16, 14, 13. Wait, so I don't know. Mary, you're 17. Yeah, it was lovely. You both were in high school together. Yeah, and she was like my high school sweetheart in Minnesota. Yeah, w- was she one of the ones you were in love with? Yes. Right. Oh, so that's one of the three. I, mean, mm. I think it might have been a puppy love, if, like to be honest. I wait. So three. So there's sh- there's layers of love. Uh, I it's agree. not just love. Yeah. Um, the deepest depths. Okay, so your ex-wife, obviously. Yeah. Mary. Mary, and then who's the third? Um, say I would prefer it. not to say. <laughs> Wait, say the situation. You don't say. No, no, no. I, I don't know. I don't want to say the other person's name. Either there's, Sheena Shea. No, there's, there's four actually. There's four. Four. Yeah, oh wow. I think. Yeah. An unexpected wrinkle. But you've been in love. I've been in love with George. I think so. George, not with George. Oh. George is the new one. He's the one that we're talking to now. I don't. Remember. Oh, Randy is what we call Randy. Him. Yeah. No, but I feel like love is very layered, you know? Yes. Were there situations where you thought that you were in love in the past that you maybe look back on and you're like, mm, maybe I wasn't really in love? Yeah. But you still, like, loved that person still on some level, but you weren't, like, madly love. in love. Yeah. You weren't, like, head over heels, gaga, I want to date this. You're just like, 
I love you, dog. Truly, I, I love you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's wow. kind of how even my first ex, so I said, I, you know, hung out with recently and we'll just like, but I'll like tell him about people that I'm dating and whatnot, but yeah, we'll still like hook up and hold hands while we're just having a nice time together. But then I won't see him for like another two years. We just like check in. But like, in, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that sounds healthy. Healthy. Yeah. For real. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, what's up? And yeah, we're just kind of like talking about whatever, but it's just so, you know, there's that connection. And she's like, yeah, I love this person. I want the best for you, whatever. And that's all it is. Could get a little messy though. Why don't you just date? Like, why don't you pick one of these exes to like actually commit to? They all broke up with me. But there's, they're clearly still choice. back around. They haven't cut you off completely. I know. I think it's because I'm fun. You are fun. Thank you. It's all I have to offer. Are we going to offer this poor girl advice? What do we do here? Oh, yeah. Fuck oh, this girl. oh, yeah. What's sorry. Nadia? Yeah. Or Paula. Nadia? Paula. Paula. Who she seems fine. She's like, he farted and I left him. She never went back to him. Yeah, honestly, she seems like she's got a real but head in her shoulders. Really solid. Well, first head. of all, that is a red flag. If you show up, if you go on a date and you show up and you don't order food, but you're picking off of the your date's food, I think that's a red flag. I want to say I will give Paula advice because she thought that IHOP was the red flag and that's a green flag, Paula. I think we're romanticizing it. But it also depends on, like, which IHOP. Because, like, some of the IHOPs are in, like, sketchy locations. But, like, some of them are great. First date. Yeah. I love it just as much as you. But first date is a it's bit tricky. of a. Second What's date. your Second go-to, date. go-to first date? Did you answer that? Yeah. No. Yeah, well, Grove. I just threw, I threw. This is the first thing that popped in my head was the Grove. Because I've always loved oh, yeah, it. I know Where's it's cheesy. Where's your Katie's first date? Um, I think one of the first times we ever kissed was at the... The Belmont, which is like a side character in Vanderpump. Yesterday. I, I was, love the Belmont. I love the Belmont. That was my first date with George. Interesting. I met him at the Belmont. He lived down the street for the Belmont, so we went to the Belmont. And it was really supposed to be one drink because he's like, I'm going to dinner with friends after this so I can meet for like a drink. We had a drink, and then he blew off his friends. We went back to his apartment. We made out, and then we went to dinner. Wait, that's honestly like a perfect a night. Perfect. And it, it was great. Those, that's... But I feel like a, a drink is where is a great place to start for a day because you can have one drink, or if it goes well, you can have you know. Oh, I've gone on drinks. a bender with them. That's fine too. Yeah. Randy was, bender, yeah. was supposed to be just one drink and then it led to another drink and then another drink at another spot and then we ended and she then I, I didn't get job. home until 11 a.m. the next morning. Wait, so you made out with Katie in the bathroom? No, 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 just like <laughs> in the bar. I think that was the first time we kissed was in the Belmont actually. And Kristen actually facilitated. On the first date? I think it was like, I don't even, it was, we people. were hanging out with yeah. other friends, which I think is a good way to do a first I date. I agree. Group date. Um, um, but yeah, Kristen was the matchmaker with me and Katie, and I think the the Belmont's funny because it has a lot of Vanderpump Rules lore, yeah. and it's like almost its own character in Vanderpump. We filmed so many scenes there yeah. for eleven seasons. Also, fun fact: my partner Greg actually opened the Belmont. Really? So it was like one of my favorite bars. So it's kind of a full, cool, full circle moment that now I'm partners with the guy who opened one of my favorite bar in West Hollywood. That's wild. Yeah. The Belmont. Do you want to sponsor? Um, I see some crazy stuff at the Belmont. Yeah, no, but I think it's it's like a it's indicative of the time you're having. Like, I remember I went <clears throat> there was a guy again from CrossFit, and we actually were like leaving workout, and he's like, "Do you want to go grab a drink at Barney's?" Which I usually actually take a lot of my first dates to Barney's, but I don't come like dates because oh, yeah, more like so Barney's. like again people that I've already hung out with in groups or whatever, and I'm like, "Let's do this and see." And so yeah, we were like, "Let's go to Barney's." It was like eleven thirty a.m., maybe noon, expecting to just have a drink. We ended up having this wild day. I slept over his house, woke up the next morning, and it was just this whole wild time. But I'm like, we just had this great like. 18 hours together. Do you know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, that's... Those are the best ones. Yeah. Because then it turns like, into a whole affair. It sounds effortless. Yeah. Effortless. And just... Like, you know, we both kind of like blacked out, I think. That's okay. As long as you're both okay with it and you're... You woke you're, up you're... snuggling and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the next story. Yeah. Okay. This one comes from Claudia. So we have Claudia and Paula. Mm. Claudia says, <laughs> I once farted a guy out of my apartment. I met this guy at a New Year's Eve party back in 2007. He was so sweet and asked me for my number to go out. That week, he called me, and we went out to one of his favorite restaurants, Bossa Nova. I actually enjoy Bossa Nova. Nova. The prices and the food are great. Yeah. Um, I always order the traditional platter. It has everything. So delicious. He had the same thing. We had chit-chat and had a nice time. On the way back to my place, we made out right when we got home. I then asked him if he wanted to come up for a quick drink. He said yes. We went upstairs and I poured a glass of a, a nice glass of wine. We started to make out on the couch with the TV on. Then all of a sudden, I farted. I got up and ran to the bathroom. I kept apologizing. He got out the or I got out the Febreze. Imagine if he got out the Febreze at her apartment. 
He's like, girl, you're foul. I got out the Febreze and started spraying the hell out of it. Sat back down, and then it happened again. Shit. I got back up, opened my sliding window by the living room. My cat ran out of the living room to hide. I sat back down, and it happened again. This time, my poor date got a pillow from the couch and put it over his face. He couldn't breathe. So then after me spraying the hell out of my place with Febreze, he finally got up to bid farewell. And of course, I didn't stop him. I just kept apologizing over and over again until he left my place. Yikes. Can you believe I never heard from him again? I mean, I think we see a doctor is where I'm going advice-wise. How do you accidentally (laughs) fart three times? I think we see a doctor. That's like, also... This is this is like a polarizing moment in that because it could also be like a, a moment where they fall madly in love and then he ends up telling this story during the wedding at his vows. What would you do in this situation? You're on a date with a girl. You have a good time. You're making out. You get back to her place and then she just can't stop farting. If it was if I was really digging her, I would I would laugh with her and make her feel comfortable. I wouldn't be like a deal breaker. Agree. I would if just be like, well, are you okay? I would be at this day and age. We've been through a lot of yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm pretty practical. I wouldn't be a deal breaker. I would be like, can I? Get you some gas sex or something, or, or like you both laugh and you're like, ah, like, then you have sex. Yeah, like it's that's not yeah. that's not gonna freak me out. My new motto, and I just learned this, I think, like on Instagram. My new motto is, you can't say or do the wrong thing to the wrong person. Wait, say that again. Yes. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Sorry, you can't Wait. say the right the wrong thing to the right person. Meaning, if they're your person, you're never gonna fuck it up I because they're that. meant to be your person. Is that original? Where'd you get that from? No, I said I got it from like Instagram. I don't know. Somebody posted it to like a story or something, and I was yeah. like, that is deep. And so now that's how I approach dating. So even with George, yeah, Randy. even not with Randy. Just Randy's kidding. done now. <laughs> with George. Even with George, um, it's still like, I'm like, you know what? Should I text this or should I say this? And then I'm like, no, if he's the right person, I can't do or say the wrong thing. That's beautifully stated. And that's something like I'm envy. Although, you know, I, I let me start over. That's a beautiful thing when you're in a relationship and you just can do almost no wrong. Yeah. As long as you're not an asshole or abusive verbally or physically. Yeah. I'm just thinking like when, when you're at a point where you're so comfortable with someone. Yeah. You can just yeah. almost say anything. Because you're not in your head. Yeah. And you don't feel like you're going to be judged by them for being yourself. Yeah. It's different with, like, toxic behavior. But I agree. Like, if you're just completely yourself and you feel comfortable being that way with somebody else, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like as soon as you feel like you're being judged for anything, it's probably not not the right scenario. Yeah. What's your red flag game? Pull this it is out. it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> My red flag game. Yeah. Because, again, uh, clearly a lot of people that think red flags or red flags are actually green flags. Oh, my God. I love red flags. The more red flags, the better. Okay. <laughs> Real? I love red flags. I can fix it. They're just so ex- – yeah. Oh, my God. Give me a – I'm a property brother. Give me a good fixer-upper. <laughs> oh, I love it. I don't want red flags to fix, I, but I love somebody with, like, a gritty past or something like that. Like, remember I said I was, like, oh, cultured. Yeah. One, I, one of my exes, I was, like – Second time we hung out, hung out, and he was like, "Oh, I'm like I used to like shoot up my neck," and I was like, oh, "I love." That's definitely not a deal breaker for me. It's no, no, cool. I was like, actually, I've never. As long as it was in your past, yeah, people, of course. Yeah, people who have reformed and turned their life around, like Hello? they usually yeah. have killer senses of humor. Yeah, point in case. personality. Thank you yeah. exactly. That's the thing too, personality. Yeah, these beige individuals out there. Okay, choose your biggest red flag out of these. Okay, drinks anything besides water. That's a weird one. I mean, I, I do want you hydrated. Spends too much time in the mirror. Is obliv- oblivious to literally everything. Overthinks anything and everything. Is secretive or tends to gossip. Overthinkers are can be disastrous. Overthinkers is a tough one. You can never win. They're just you're, and you're like, what? What do you want from me? That was the exact reaction. And from? I've done it. I've been. I'm sure we've all been guilty of overthinking. In moderation, it's okay. Yeah. It's inevitable. But like a chronic overthinker can be a vamp energy vampire yeah energy because then vampire. you're constantly trying to prove to to um shit what was the word that i was thinking you're constantly trying to um uh, reassure them yeah. or like comfort yeah. them or just yeah. Be like yeah you have good vocab oh it comes yeah. and goes it does. <laughs> it does okay choose your biggest red flag out of these ones has it says like a ton of zeros like a million unread text messages like basically those notifications hmm. can't drive to save their life um, enjoys the company. Well, this is a weird one. Has trust issues. Has a beyond messy room. 
trust issues because I feel like you need to do a lot of work to work through that. Like the messy room, we can, you know, work. And that on. might be a phase, the messy yeah. room. Something yeah, like you may be going through something. What do you think? Yeah, I what, guess the trust, the messy thing. I'm a very clean, like truly OCD person, so yeah. it's pretty like. I, yeah, your apartment's very clean. It's unbelievable. Um, maybe the trust issues. You should get dogs. No, because then it'll disrupt your no, whole. No, I don't want any of that in my life. I used to love a clean apartment. Then I got two dogs, and now I'm like, it's so hard to just keep it. I have toys everywhere. I have two dogs as well, toys, and I love them more than bones. anything in the world. They're worth, but they are, it is a full time. It's a job. You have to keep up dog hair. It's like you're constantly cleaning up dog hair. I love dogs. I grew up with dogs, and even like as of like a few years ago, I still wanted a dog myself and whatever, and have dated people with dogs. Now I don't know what has shifted. I'm almost like. I don't want to even date somebody with a dog because I don't want to be dealing with the mess there. And then us being like, oh, we have to go and walk the dog or like, oh, this, that, and the other. Like, I, it's just not. Again, I don't you're reaching a it. certain age where these are like no longer things you need to be flagging. Like at some it's point. you flag, but I'm kind of just like, oh, Christ. Wait, Zach, I, hypothetical. Yeah. Two weeks from now, you meet the love of your life. You yeah. guys start dating. You're falling in love. You're like, oh, my God. All of a sudden, three months have gone by. You're like, this is at least a situationship, probably a relationship. But then, like, six months in, like, it just, like, one night he just snaps. He's like, I just be honest. I fucking hate dogs. And I don't know, like. Done. Done. For me, done instantly. See, but, no, that's a big indicate. You have to like the dogs up front like if i sense there's like energy where you're not feeling the dogs immediate swipe left because the dogs aren't going anywhere they're with me for no, the rest I, of their lives yeah. and they're right now they're only a little over a year so they're still babies they're going to be around for a while on the opposite side to me if your dog is ugly it's a deal breaker yeah that's yeah i don't <laughs> yeah. want like the an uglier ugly the little, better no no if you have an ugly i really cannot it's no the uglier, you know, the cuter. No, and I, there's actually something that really bothers me when a dog's really ugly. It's this ratty little shit, yeah. and the person's like, "Oh my cute thing." I, I, I would. It's, it's annoying. Do you want to see my dogs? <laughs> Your dogs uh, are kind cute. Of, show me the. Tell me the breed first. Is there a tattoo there? No. There? No. no. <laughs> Wait, I have a. <laughs> Hold on a okay, let's see. Oh, oh, they oh, are actually, is. they are, they oh, are very cute. No, the other side, other side, yeah. They are little fluff balls. They are very cute, though. But so they're those so are not cute. like ugly rat dogs. They're not that, ugly like, at all. No, 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 no that's what I'm saying. So those are very cute. cute. However, if I come and you've got a greyhound, I'm take, I'm leaving. I don't have a greyhound, but my dogs are, okay, so oh, this is hands. also a reframe of the mindset that I've now shifted to. Clearly, I've been doing a lot of work on myself lately. But no, I used to think, because when I first got my dogs, um, because they're big boys they're big dogs but they're babies so they're also they've got a lot of energy and at first i was like this is a lot for a guy to sign up with he's gonna sign up for me Sorry. who's already a lot and then you know my life is all over the internet which is has already caused problems with other guys before and then on top of that i have two giant dogs that they're gonna have to sign up for as well and i was like that's a lot of like baggage that they would be signed up for and then i stopped myself and i said you know what no, we're going to reframe this. That's not a lot that they're signing up for. These are add-ons. These are bonuses that they get to, like, yes, my my job is a little challenging because everything is out there. However, that job will afford us a lot of really nice dinners. Yes, my dogs are a lot, but you know what? Or it could be a lot for dogs. They provide but a, a lot of love. They provide a lot of love and they and stability and, you know, and they're very loving. No, and I get it too. I mean, even my first boyfriend had a dog, an English bulldog, and I ended up like loving her. It was mm. one of the best parts of the relationship. But yeah, I think English it's just bulldog. a lot to take on. Yeah. On that note too, though, and it, like if you have a snake, absolutely not. Uh, no, I, I can can't never do even a sleep snake. in house with a I snake. I can't do a snake. Have you ever held one? It feels amazing. No. No, no reptiles. I reptiles only are a deal when breaker. I jerk off. No. <laughs> oh Christ! Yeah, reptiles are a complete deal breaker. Man, I I, I would. Okay, you guys are breaking my heart because I go to reptile shows. I love reptiles really? and amphibians. Me and Kyle Chan go. Like, I love, I, I used <sighs> to be a collector, like, RIP dog. Oh, wait, what? My lizard on the show that passed away. Oh, and his and name is Dog? Some people yeah. say it was the lowest point in the history of Vanderpump Rules. Because he buried a, the dog on, oh, he buried we, the, the lizard on the show. And then we had a funeral at um, Sky Bar. <laughs> Skybar is also becoming like a Vanderpump hotspot. It really is. Yeah, I really struggle with lizards as well. So I don't. Like I know. Reptiles. I know. I think they're. I can't even. They creep me out. I feel like. I, f I feel like you would warm up to a, a reptile or amphibian for someone you really dig. I ran out of people's houses. 
Genuinely. What if Ryan got a snake and then was like, you know what, Jeff? I think I want to get back with you. Listen, if they're See? a ginger, no, 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 I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's really, it's a, it's a non-negotiable. Wait, what do you think of this new rap boy summer trend that's going on? Oh, I did see. Where it's like um, Jeremy Allen White, Tom Holland, like these guys that are a little more scrawny. They put they Travis have a little Barker pin- in that category. They which... have a, like a little pinched in kind of face. Like they look kind of rodent-ish and they're saying like this is the season of the Rat Boy Summer. I right? saw that. Timothy Chalamet, who's yeah. incredibly good looking. And super handsome. I've been seeing Jeremy Allen White. I've seen him yeah. three times. I feel like... I don't I've... think he's a he's a rap boy, though. He's very handsome. He's very and handsome. I, for, for some whatever reason... I don't. I don't know why I've put this on him, but I've 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 tur- I've decided he's a good omen because I've had doubts. Yeah. I've I've floundered at times with shorts and sandies. It almost broke me a few times. But whenever I see him, I don't know something about the bear. I'm reaching here, but it feels like a good omen. I'm on the yeah. right track. Yeah. So Jeremy I, Allen White, if I, I I saw him at Earth Bar in West Hollywood the other day. What's and, funny is that's Ryan's number one. Like as Jeremy as like, Allen White. Yeah, he's like that's. And he's like, very. Attra- I liked him when he was on Shameless. Here's what I'll say, and this might Lip. come off wrong. He's somebody. That is not supposed to be hot, but he is. He's ugly, but he's hot. Those are the hottest dudes. Those are. Totally. That's why it's the trend of rap boy yeah. summer. Have you ever dipped into the boy pond, the no, man pond? I haven't. He's You've like never I want even to. made out He's with like a dude. Just... I've never made out. If I mean, Jeremy I Ellen White walked into Schwartz and Sandy's and was like, "Let's make out," you wouldn't do it. I mean, maybe just to say I made out with Jeremy Ellen White, yeah, but I've never. You have to. I mean, I kissed Tom Sandoval, but that was like spin the bottle, yeah, yeah, and I yeah, lost. Yeah. And um, let's see what else. I don't think. No, I've never. I mean, most of my half of my friends are gay, at least. But I've yeah. never, I've never had any. I've never dipped my toe into the boy pond. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just like hooking up with. Yeah, it is Pride Month. Did you know that? Is that is that? <laughs> as he, as you know, I did. The actually. homophobia still lives. I right didn't. <laughs> Um, you were just at a fucking kidding. pride parade. No, I was not. Do not hear me. I went on a rant on Instagram. I was like, I cannot. You, with t- you Steven said that you were at a pride parade. That's not true. What had happened was I said, hey, guys, I will stop into your apartments before you guys go over there so I can say hello. And I walked them over and literally got a drink to go to walk back. Oh, that's what happened. And I didn't, of course, I wasn't paying for some festival crap. No, I was like, bye. Yeah. And then I just, that's all I did. Yeah. You're not a festival person. I did no, um, it's too much. Yeah, it's a lot. It's Stimulation. I Leo do Pride it. is so fun, but that man, those those phone heister uh, rings are. They got, man, they got my, they got my girl. They got like a they got, and then we went to the Apple Store, and there was twelve. Well, so they were like, by the way, you're the twelfth person who came in today. Uh, Whether phone stolen in West Hollywood, they run a tight ship. You got to be on top of your things here, and listen, carry a mini screwdriver in your pocket if things go wrong. Can you not? I mean, whatever. That's hardcore. That's an intimate death. You kill someone with a screwdriver. So like, well, yeah. Did you see the people Many on the internet driver. think that you're people online think you're in love with Lala? Have <laughs> you ever had a crush on Lala? She just had talked about I was listening to it on her podcast that that people think that you're in love with Lala. Maybe like a Have you ever had like a little crush on her? Maybe when she I think she what she came on season 4 or 5 I think. Maybe when she first came onto the scene, like subconsciously, she's but very attractive. Yeah. I was like, well, she's... well, yeah, she was walking out with walking around with her titties out, and she was just such a character. Like, but I never nothing I ever wanted to act on, or I wasn't like lusting. But like, yeah, I was. I could appreciate yeah. her, not just her beauty, but also her her spunk. Her, yeah, but like spark. So spark. Yeah, her. So pizzazz. then maybe Katie yeah. did have a point of being like, "Don't walk around with your tits <laughs> around in front of my husband." These are old school references. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's funny. That episode was on the other day, and. Um... But yeah, you should bring Lala in to revisit that episode of Vanderpump Rules at Schwartz and Sandy's Lala. Tuesday watch parties. Lala tits Let's out and all. Tits <laughs> out and all. Well, now she's pregnant. Tits yeah. out and all. Yeah. Um. But uh, wait, where were we? My brain uh, just. No, shut I was down. just asking if you were in love with Lala. And you oh said no, that. I was not. No, I've never seen people this on the said internet. they said that this season you guys had that moment and there was like a, a chemistry what kind of moment. I think, I think they're I think they were just hitting it off, but they have a, chem- a natural chemistry. Off. Like, well, they were just, like, having a good moment where, like, she didn't want to kill him. We stopped being friends for a long time. She okay. felt betrayed because I had played pickleball with her ex-fiance. Uh, yeah. I mean, pickleball's pickleball. Pickleball's pickleball. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what, okay, but, let's not get... I don't want to get into another... Yeah, not, I don't want to like, get any trouble with Law. No, we're... I'm already still... We're, from the up. last show... The last... The... Were you at the Thanksgiving show? The Friendsgiving show? Yeah, you were yes, in the I show. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. And Kristen yeah, yeah. and Gigi were there. 
And then Gigi said not nice things about about Lala. And then Lala got mad at Kristen for not saying nice things about Lala on stage. It was a whole thing. And it's still going on. And Kristen was just on Nick Vile's podcast talking about it. I'm like, how are we still talking about well, And this? so you were intimate with Lala. And what happened? Never. Oh, kidding, my God. <laughs> Lala, shout no, out to Lala. No, I mean Lala. intimate. So you guys had a moment. What ne no, moment? there was zero intimacy. No, no, no. Okay. It was. Uh, I'm the one that said a moment. And okay. so, yeah, so they would, they just were having like a fun, cheeky banter on the show. And you could just tell that there was like chemistry but chemistry can come we just have chemistry like that doesn't La mean yeah, that we're yeah. fucking in Lala's words she would chew me up and spit me out she's not wrong like we're just not mm. compatible um, do you feel you're on the more submissive side um, yeah what's your type I, I'm well balanced great answer I am I'm not like uh, I feel like Katie was pretty you know she would put little, you she would put little, you in your she'd have a whips and chains for you she wasn't domineering but she was like a little more like, alpha she beat the maybe shit out of me no I'm just kidding. We um, are you attracted <laughs> to more are you attracted to more alpha girls i mean it's not a red flag mm. so you're turned on by alpha chicks i don't know about that but it's like uh, yeah. i think you need a healthy <laughs> want, i think he wants a strong woman yeah yeah which like yeah you want like a strong individual I, listen i'm the same if i had some like we, I would dis annihilate a, a, some like weak little, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> a weakling. Uh, yeah, it would be destroyed. What type of guy Slash do you see me people. settling with? Mm. Very observant. I am. I'm like a lesbian. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. Actually, like I don't picture it. See, yeah. it's just not in the cards for me. Most people say they're like I, I've never known you to ever be in a relationship that I could never imagine. Like you're so focused on like work and your career that like relationship just doesn't. Maybe somebody that, like looks like you. Why would I date somebody I that know. looks like me? I dated somebody that looks almost exactly like me. No, I don't want that. Oh my god, you guys are gonna end up together. Yeah, right. No, no, it's definitely not my time. <laughs> <laughs> but Jock was telling me this. He was just like, like I was trying to come to him with like boy problems, and he was just like, I just don't see you as like a per like a a relationship dating sexual person. Maybe you're asexual. I'm not asexual. I love dating. I love love, and I love sex. I just haven't committed to anybody, so it's a weird idea for anybody to see me in a relationship with anybody. Do you love love? Like I feel like we really love love. Love it. Like ugh. Forget. Do about you it. not think that I, I love love? I want to walk out of here and fall in love on the 101 on the way home. No, <laughs> see. Like a glance from, well, you know, I told you my dream is that I'm at a gas station. I'm very big into cars. And so do not compliment me, but like where I'm at the gas station, somebody's like, oh my God, you have a nice, like what a special car, blah, blah, blah. And we just start talking and then we fall in love at the gas station. But it starts with you acknowledging they have a cool car? No, oh. they want me and they're, they're he like has respecting a cool car. something of like, oh. oh, like, yeah. My friends roast me. I have a 2019 Mercedes like C300. It's cool. It's a little coupe, but my friends are always like, "That's that's the car that a Vegas bottle service." I was going to say it's very girly, but I like it. Okay. And he has well, a, as a, a submissive Jeep, individual, he has a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> a Jeep Wrangler, and that well, no, the, what I was talking about was the STI. Sporty, rugged. The STI is. You don't have the sporty. You don't have the STI anymore. I do still have it because nobody's fucking buying it. Oh. Would you like another car? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Something a little a little more masculine. I'm, Don't tell me it's white. It's white. No, oh, it's not. No. Oh my god. Oh, brother. I got the night package on it. And what does your lady think about this? She, she's like, she, she, she drives all the cool. time. She thinks she looks great in it. It's a cool car. I think I pull it off. I get a lot of compliments on it from dudes. Actually, mm. you guys aren't buying it. Mm. I have no problem with it. You know, you kind of remind me of my twin brother. In this, like, I'm trying to think how to say this, like, don't be insulted. Almost like this, like, <laughs> oh, hmm, I don't want to say like femininity, you know, like, um, this, like, soft, not, hmm, I can't say this, uh, appropriately, so I'm actually gonna just turn it back. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, I love love. You love love. I would actually, I know what you're trying to say, and I would disagree yeah. with you. No, it's like a, no, I think Schwartz is way more masculine no, no, than Justin. Yeah, no, no, but you are, you're, you're very masculine. It's not that. It's more of like a, <laughs> very. When I'm able to articulate it, I will send out a newsletter. We'll circle back to it. Yeah, an e-blast. <sighs> well, well, Schwartz and Sandy's is, is popping off. You have watch parties every Tuesday. We do. We're doing the crawl on Jax's birthday, actually. I haven't oh. announced that. We're going to do another crawl for Jax's birthday. We're That'll crawling. be fun. Yeah, we're going to start at Sir, Tom Tom. We're going to head east, go to Schwartz and Sandy's, and finish strong at Jax Taylor's, do a little karaoke. You guys are welcome to pop in at any time. It would be a great honor.
Um, what is the transportation situation? So is it limo bus. this time? Yeah, we we yeah we sell tickets online. There's a bus and it's a big party. Great bus. swag bag merch. Special guests situation. this time that we're lining up. Jeremy Allen White. You should go, Jeremy Allen White. If you should go there. to the Jacks portion because you actually like sports bars and you like karaoke. And I feel like yeah. of all of the spots, Jacks is is your your vibe. I'm more about like a yeah a sports bar situation. We'll do a little par- parlor revival. Uh, we, no, so we sad. should do. Remember, we've been talking about hosting a speed dating. Oh, yeah. We should do a singles night at Schwartz and Sandy's. I would love to do that. A singles night or a speed date night. Because we've been trying to make it happen. And we were thinking of doing the bourbon room. But the bourbon room is right by Schwartz and Sandy. I'll host it with you. I will say it's a great romantic atmosphere. Like it's, it's It is very it's a, romantic. Yeah. Schwartz and Sandy is very romantic. Thank you. Underrated date spot, especially if you want to go Wednesdays. Because Wednesdays are low key. There's not. It's like I'm not going to lie. There's, oh, I think it's like Wednesdays are like half off. And I was like, yeah, man. Well, we're gonna be working on that. But Wednesdays are slow. Okay. But I feel like it's the perfect date spot. Because I, I curate the music Wednesdays. It's always really good. Shout out to me. Um, and it's just a good vibe. Like shout out to Avril Lavigne. It is. It has. <laughs> it's got like good mood lighting, and then like the boothing, the booth situation's a little intimate. So I just, yeah, you're, it is very. Thanks. Oh, wait, that remind me actually, romantic. real quick. What would be one of your favorite love songs? You go first. Yeah. Well, you... just because I thought about this, and I do have ones that are actually like, of course, much deeper. But I will say, like a a pop gem that would actually fit this. I'm with you by Avril Lavigne. Really? A real hit. No. Um, and then I think like. No, do you just... listen to music while having sex? No. And what is your no? No, you just like no, silence, I have like, like AC noise on or something. I don't know, like like white. Noise. Are you into music during sex? I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely. Not, I think it's better. It enhances it. Or yeah. Or like even at least yeah, some friends reruns song. or I just something. I don't like when people put like crazy techno music. I know. I feel like I can't slutty gay into... guys do that. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing here? I, that's not my vibe. But I remember one time there was this one guy. He like we were like cuddling, and he was just like, "What is like your one go to sex song?" And I was like, I don't know, but I do have like a playlist. If somebody wants music, I'll put on this specific playlist, you know, like low in the background. And I was like, why? He's like, you have a whole playlist? And I was like, yeah, like sex lasts a while. (laughs) Um, And he's just like. It's not just one song. Yeah. And I was like, why? What's your one song? And he's just like, Pony. I knew he, I knew th- my pony. It's an iconic song. I, I like R and B. Yeah, but R and B is R and B is a great nice. genre. It's but a I smooth cruise. I was like, uh, really, pony? And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, it's just so cliche. Like, ride my pony during sex. Like, it's just a little on the nose. Be- yeah. And he was so offended. He like thought that I was making fun of him, which I kind of was. But like, pick a more original song. If you're gonna pick a genuine song, go with something like "So Anxious." Oh, yeah. you know that one? Yeah. So. That's just my life. Just like That's put, your life. My, so my life. Someone else just put like, I'll be like, all right, I'll just like throw the TV on, and I'm like, oh, she's something in the background. So I'll put on like Flavor of Love. Oh. And then I love Flavor. Of yeah, love. you have like New York like screaming at somebody, and like I can't do TV during sex. Well, reruns. It's too distracting. Reruns. No, and then I would think of love song. Actually, there's a song called Bloom by the Paper Kites. But all right, love song. Um, that's a, that's a tough one. Hmm. There's so many good ones. Pony. I like. I love like. 70s soulful stuff like Celine Dion I like uh, (laughs) maybe some like man I mean of course I I wouldn't mind like (laughs) say it I don't know I don't know wait I can't think of what I have so many can I come back to this come back to this and quickly then tell us what do you do so you don't put on music during sex but if it's on sometimes sometimes not every time but yeah do you have a go to move when picking up chicks it's just a natural thing. I, it is just a natural thing. I don't have it. I don't have much game. It's just like I sometimes I have chemistry with someone. It's undeniable. Here's what I'll say. I don't have a. You either have it or you don't. Or you don't. I'm not saying I have it. I have something. Not it, but I have something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, just saying, I was like, I I have something too. I just don't, I don't. I'm just bad with. I'm like mean. Like I like haze you a little bit, and sometimes people don't Listen, read that I'm right. A, I'm a flirt. I'm just good at it. I know, but it's also getting. And I didn't realize it until gets a few you into years trouble like, so yeah, yeah. much. Zach, I'm predicting it. One year and three months from now, you are going to meet someone, and you're going to fall in love, and you're going to date, and you're going to be in a relationship. Why does everybody come in here and want to predict? What's his name? Who's the dude? Bluesy came in. Darren. Oh, Darren. You know, what? Darren came in and said the same thing. He's like very saged and spiritual at the moment, and so I feel like this is our most um, kind of accurate reading. It yeah, everybody. But everybody's predicting that I'm going to be in a relationship. 
You're gonna be I just in a relationship. don't know if I'm like the relationship. Like, I'm not the type you marry. I'm the type you divorce. You know, if that makes sense. Maybe you'll meet somebody at Shorts and Sandy's. One year. Maybe it's what, of somebody Singles that works there. Three months. Bartenders there that- oh, Max is pretty hot. I think Max is dating somebody. Yeah. I think Which Max time? is dating somebody. Was that hard when he banged Katie? Um, it was. It, it never upset me. Um, I never. I never. I just was just like shocking. It was a curveball. Yeah. I did not have that on my bingo card, as they say these days. You know what I mean? But did no, you have like an awkward conversation with him after? Did, we, he hit me up a few days later, and we went to um, Laurel Tavern in Studio City. Love that mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Laurel Tavern. Mm-hmm. And, we, and he just, dude, he just, we talked about it, and he apologized, and we hugged it out. It's like, yeah. it had been so long since then. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Stuff well, like that's happened. It didn't, happened. It didn't I've bother had me stuff at all. Like that. When you're like, it happened. Like, when one of your friends sleeps with your ex-wife? No, I hooked up with one of oh, my friends. Oh, you've friends. done this. Why am I not surprised that you've done this? <laughs> I think then, yeah. I think if I think if I had still had feelings for Katie or still like really was depressed about the divorce, yeah. it would have been was, way different. It's time after. Yeah. Yeah. And this is somebody he'd only dated for a little bit and it had been years prior. And I'm like, it's one of those things where it's like you can't mark your territory and take ownership of everything. Because like, then we wouldn't be able to hook up with anybody here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. all there's always gonna be overlap. Yep. You just, yeah. you know, respect th- their situations. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Hey. Thank you, Schwartz. Thomas. I'm sad we don't get to go hang out after and get lunch. I know. But that's Probably okay. My, my, a behaved day. We'll come in. We'll pick a, we'll do, well, I don't know. Do you want to do brunch at Tom Tom or do you want to do Bre- Schwartz and Sandy? Breakfast shots. I was thinking maybe a little like start at the Belmont and then go to Tom Tom night of oh, us that'd together. Be fun. That'd be fun. Okay. And then Schwartz the and The Belmont Sandy's. is a good spot. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll set it up. But as for right now, if anybody does want to go to Schwartz and Sandy's Tuesday nights, you guys do watch parties. We do. And Saturday night, we always have a great DJ. Shout out to DJ Ray Van. And um, we got some other stuff we're cooking up. But thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. And Wednesday nights are great date nights at Schwartz and Sandy's. They are so underrated. They really are. Thank you. Thank you, Schwartz. Thank Bye-bye. you, guys. This was fun. Happy birthday. Thank you.